What's up everybody? Let's talk metal a bit, specifically painting metallics. Whether you're doing a biological force like the Tyranids in miniature wargaming, or you're doing something in scale modeling even, chances are you're still going to paint metallic, whether it's a base feature for your Tyranids or you're doing some type of conversion, maybe um, you have a, a, a one of the talons of a Carnifex pierced through a rhino door or something. The point is chances are most all painters in this hobby will be doing metallic in some form. An amulet, a, a weapon, armor, the full body, whatever it is. So as a result, the realm of meta painting metallics has two spectrums to it. You have true metallic metal paints and you have a technique called non-metallic metal. I want to talk non-metallic metal right away, but I thought I would say that for a follow-up video to this one, which will be talking about true metallic metal paints. The reason being is non-metallic metal is a, is a technique meant to replicate true metallic metal painting and then some, right? There's more than just that. But um, I figure, well, since it's a, a whole technique replicating you know, that and designed to um, substitute true metallic paints, I should discuss true metallic metal paints first. So that's what I'm gonna do here in this ramble. It's gonna be a bit long-winded and it is going, oh, potentially anyway, and I'm going to really just cover true metallic metals for what we're talking about here, which is paints. And this is where the apples and oranges effect comes in. Non-metallic metal discussion is gonna be on a technique that uses specific recipes depending upon what you're going for and you follow that technique. Whereas true metallic metals, we're discussing paints. And is there a recipe for true metallic metals if you're doing, let's say, granites or whatever? Yeah, of course. You know, what you put as a base, what you might shade it with, and then whatever else. But what we're really discussing here is the paint itself. Because true metallic metal painting is just like painting any other uh, color or style of your model, right? So if you're doing granites, you know, and you got robes, and you have flesh tones, and you got hair, painting the silver armor is no nothing out there and out of left field in comparison to doing flesh tones or whatever else. You can paint metallic with metallic paints um, with dry brushing or with layering and a bit of wet blending, whatever else. You can actually mix metallic colors a little bit or, or um, you know, go from bulk and the Beltris color up to like ruined silver or whatever and really get like a, a nice highlight effect in your silver even on golds and whatever else. So it's not so much an effect or a technique because it works with standard painting techniques as we're just talking standard traditional painting here. The most important thing is don't not sleep on true metallic metal paints. They are not amateur, if you know, as some people sometimes will describe it, you know, a bit um, incorrectly. They are fantastic paints to use. True metallic metal paints, however, have an extra quality to them which has led to the whole reason non-metallic metal exists and has led to people being a bit more particular potentially about the metallic paints. And that feature is what makes them metallic. They have a, a mineral or metal powder slash flake in the medium alongside the pigment. This is what makes metallic paints look well metallic. This is what gives them that luster that metal has, that sheen that metal has. You lay down a sheet of metal next to wood, next to plastic, next to like a sandstone, next to cloth. It's gonna, it has a sheen, this luster that those just won't have. And this is achieved in the paint with that, you know, powder slash flake, however they're doing it. And not all paints are created equal in this, in this fact. Some paints, people might just feel their flake, their powder makes the paint have too much of a grain to it when it's dry for their liking. And this is why non-metallic metal exists in essence, or why I, it started anyway, and there's some interesting effects beyond that, of course. But um, with that said, when it comes to miniature painting, we predominantly use acrylic paints. So I'm gonna just, just be discussing acrylics. I'll mention alcohol and alclads, but really just be discussing acrylics here. I don't, I don't not have enough enamel experience to talk about their metallics, but all I can say is that um, because of that flake, that powder, there's, there are two things you might want to keep in mind. And this is why people get a little bit more particular at times about the metallic paints they use. 
in general, for my money, when it comes to acrylic metallics, if it's managed for wargaming, formulated paint, they tend to be pretty good. I'm, I'm not saying they're all identical, not necessarily. They tend to be pretty decent. Um, I am a fan of Citadel paints, not just because I play 40K and it's GW paints or whatever else, and it's convenient, but I do legitimately like them. But, you know, I've used Vallejo, I use Army Painter paints and stuff, and including metallics, and they're not bad either. They're fine. However, I will say I use alcohol-based paints for my metallics, and I'll cover that a little bit later. The two things to keep in mind are water pots and paintbrushes. If you've ever cleaned off a paintbrush or cleaned off something in a water pot that from it with metallic paint, you'll notice, aside from it being dirty water, it has a sheen, a glitter effect on top of it. That is that metallic flake, that, that metallic mineral powder thingy I was talking about. And this can contaminate your brushes and paint for doing things like flesh and, and hair and, and just brown, blues, whatever. Could potentially contaminate it and um, mess up the effects you're going for or just kind of become noticeable if, no, if to nobody else to you and that's what's most important, right? So it's highly advised to go ahead and have a second water pot for your metallic paints so you don't cross contaminate. And some people even take it so far as to have a second set of paint brushes for their metallics. I've done this and I've not done this. Um, I'm not doing crazy techniques on all my models or much at all. But if I really was doing a painting session where I was getting metallics knocked out and then I was gonna move on and do um, object source lighting or some other effect, I would definitely want to have fresh water pot for that. So maybe even a second water pot, maybe even some brushes specifically for that. Thinning is the other thing to keep in mind, I guess, I suppose, because we always want two thin coats. But um, when it comes to thinning metallics, just like thinning a normal acrylic paint, if you thin it too much, it'll, the paint will separate from the binder and you get some weird shriek style stuff going on. The same is true for metallics and with a metallic flake. So just be extra cautious, I guess, and be extra careful. Don't be overzealous with thinning your metallic paints. So with that said, as I already mentioned, and there's dry brush and compound or whatever else that you can, that a metallic, there's rub and buff metallic stuff, paints out there or whatever else. It, it's a case of pick your favorite and use it and do whatever effect you're doing. If you're doing layering and you know stuff like that with washes and then reapplying paints and everything else, that's fine with true metallic paint. If you're doing dry brushing, that works too. It doesn't matter. We're not here talking about a technique because true metallic metal painting isn't necessarily a specific technique. It follows standard painting protocol and you're using true metallic paints. Um, Having said that, acrylic metallics, particularly acrylic silvers, are a great toolbox paint to have. You can mix up color with them. The best way to do this is with specifically wet pigment or dry pigments, okay too, but wet pigment is even better. Wet acrylic pigment, where you can mix blue, red, whatever, to your silver to make kind of a metallic color. Now, this works and it's a toolbox effect. There's no different than mixing red and yellow together to make a color or do something right. But silver is like a white, so it will brighten the color a little bit. Some companies make just metallic medium, which is metallic paint without the pigment. So you can do this and have it be less lightening of the color, but still probably a little bit. However, companies like War Colors and Scale 75 and other companies out there that make acrylic paints are making metallic colors too. Outside of the traditional bronze, brass, gold, copper, silver stuff, they also are making metallic red, metallic white, metallic black, metallic, you know, purple. And that's cool. Um, it's catching on a bit more. So if it's to the color of your liking, you can just pick up one of those and, and, and have a lot of fun that way. So those are some things to keep in mind as well. It's nice to have the toolbox capability though, because um, this allows you to kind of mix on the fly if you need something to be like a, if you're going for an ages effect and you don't want to just use a wash or a glaze over your, over your silver, you could kind of mix a little, little bit of blue in there and add some highlighting where you want or whatever. Um, but it, you know, it's just, 
further expanding on the fact that since we're not talking a technique, you can do a lot with these paints. Metallic is also a great base for doing candy effect slash polish lacquer looking effect. This is what I do for my Tisca Ruby on my pre Heresy Thousand Suns. I do it over a gold base. You can use a silver base or a gold base. I use a gold base because it, it makes the color feel just a bit warmer at the end. And then you put a transparent paint over it. So I use to me a clear red. This is like a translucent red. And because it's translucent, it gives a metallic underneath it. When the light hits it, it kind of comes to life a bit and it gives a nice candy effect. This is a nice toolbox effect that you get with Drew Metallic Metal Paint. So um, it's more than just making Iron Warriors or Custodes or whatever else. Now, as I mentioned, one of the reasons non-metallic metal exists is because it has no grain to it, or no metal, metal flake to it, metal powder to it. If you want true metallic metal and you really are worried about the metallic flake becoming too grainy when it dries, not that it really is a rampant problem, but some everybody's eyes are different and the way they view a color when it's done is different. Before jumping right to non-metallic metal, which is a cool effect, I recommend trying out alcohol-based paint. The best true metallic metal finish you will get is Alclad. That system is the best, but that is not a friendly system. It's advanced. It requires an airbrush with a airbrushing um, like vented box thingy. It requires a max to wear. It is uh, definitely not beginner friendly and it's not, it, 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 but it produces great effect. However, for really, really good metallic as well, that's a whole lot safer and friendly to use, I recommend alcohol-based paint. I use Vallejo's liquid metal and it looks so good. The silver, the gold, the copper, it looks just like that metal in liquid form. So um, I really like it. It's super dense in pigment and in super fine metallic flake powder stuff. And as a result, it requires being shaken up like whoa. But it's super thin being alcohol-based paint. It's It's got great coverage. It dries really fast, pretty durable. Um, the only thing that you have to adjust is no water. In place of water, use 90% rubbing alcohol, isopropyl alcohol or greater. And that is what you use in place of water for all things. And you will be good to go. Really easy to make that adjustment and have some really smooth, awesome looking metallic without having the need to get a mask and a, a paint, a airbrushing booth and an airbrush and everything else. The nice thing about alcohol based paint is that, and you might not necessarily have to use it only with alcohol based metallics, but specifically alcohol inks out there, there are metallic alcohol inks. And that is actually really cool. So um, on top of having your, you know, things like um, your Nuln Oil and Agra's Earthshade or whatever else, you can, if you're using alcohol-based metallics, you can get the alcohol-based metallic ink and have an ink that's metallized as well and really just have a true, awesome looking with true metallic metal finish in all the ways. And you can still use your Agrax and your non oil and everything else, no problem. But it's just worth noting that there is metallic ink out there in the alcohol based inks. And that's kind of cool. Aside from all that, you um, use this paint as normal. If you're gonna be dry brushing, like I said, dry brush, wet blend, layer, whatever, you can even mix gold and silver and make a super, super bright gold. You can um, do gore effect on top of this, weathering effect on top of this, uh, grim dark it. You can do object source lighting because we're talking just paints and the technique is what you apply to this paint for the finish you're looking for and then the look you're looking for on top of that without having to super plan it out. And I think that is a another cool thing to keep in mind. In any case, um, non-metallic metal is awesome. I do love it, but don't sleep on true metallic metal. Don't think it the inferior option, right? Just take a look at your options for true metallic metal paint. If acrylics just aren't fine enough for you, I recommend Vallejo's liquid metal alcohol-based range. It is fantastic. 
Anyways, with all that said, thanks so much for tuning in and stopping by. What metallic paints do you use or do you use a non-metallic metal approach? That will be the next video or follow up to this one, I should say, when I'm talking metal. It'll be talking about non-metallic metal next. In any case, hopefully this was somewhat interesting for some of you out there. Uh, again, share your thoughts on true metallic metal paints. And until next time, take it easy.